So right now things could go either way and this has West Asia on edge. Remember we are talking about one of the most militarized regions in the world. Not just because of what the regional players have but also because what global powers have deployed. There's a large number of troops and military assets from guns to long range missiles, warships and combat aircraft. And these are all active assets. For example, when Iran fired drones and missiles, three Western nations swung into action to defend Israel. The United States, the United Kingdom and France. These are all permanent members of the United Nations Security Council and all with significant forces in the region. Of course, the US has the biggest presence. Before the current tensions exploded, American forces were present in at least 10 West Asian countries. The US was present in 10 countries at least. Out of these, Kuwait, Bahrain, Qatar and the UAE host the biggest American military bases and the largest contingent of US troops. According to some estimates, the US has more than 45,000 troops and more than 20 bases in the region. The exact numbers have not been disclosed. America never does that. But even by the most conservative estimates, the US presence is quite significant. Which brings us to the UK. They have around 2,500 troops and 23 military bases in the region. The Brits are present in countries like Saudi Arabia, Iraq and Jordan. What about France? France has been a key player in the region for many decades. As of 2022, there were about 2,000 French soldiers in the region. Now, if you add all of this, you get some 50,000 soldiers. The US, the UK and France alone have at least 50,000 troops in West Asia and they sent even more when Iran threatened to attack Israel. Those additional deployments are yet to be recalled and the US has confirmed this. The pre-positioned forces, uh, even in the last few days, uh, destroyers and fighter squadrons uh, into the region to help Israel defend itself, to keep it from uh, becoming a wider war, to keep it from escalating further. It's not clear when the West will withdraw these troops and they may say that this is for deterrence, but it's a double-edged sword really. A provocation can lead to a major clash given all the presence here because their rivals too have military presence in the region. The biggest among them is of course Russia. Russia has around 6,000 troops in Syria. The Russian military is also said to be active in Libya. And this is what makes it a tinderbox, this concentration of firepower in one region. It's staggering. Plus you have the regional players like Israel, Saudi Arabia, the UAE, Iran, Iraq. And these deployments are not limited to land. The high seas are also being militarized, especially in the wake of the Gaza war. Every significant geopolitical player has a warship in the region now. The United States has 19 warships, seven in the Eastern Mediterranean and another 12 spread out across three areas, the Persian Gulf, the Arabian Sea and the Red Sea. The Red Sea in particular is crowded. Last year, when the Houthis began attacking ships, navies from around the world rushed to the region. This includes Russia, China, European nations like Germany, France, Italy, the United Kingdom, Greece and Belgium, and even Asian players like India and Sri Lanka. Until a few weeks back, India had some 10 warships deployed here. Now, all these countries are trying to protect their consignments from attacks especially the oil supplies from West Asia. That's what they're trying to protect. So there's a substantial naval presence here and a lot of volatility with at least 45 armed conflicts on as we speak. This is what makes West Asia a potentially explosive region. The last thing they want is a war between Israel and Iran. As they say, fighting fire with fire will only leave you with ashes.